signals of an unknown entity within a thousand feet of the ship. The size of it is far beyond the mind's reach. It can't be another ship. Sir, it's like something I've never seen before, and it's closing in at a preposterous speed. Wait, this can't be. What's up, everyone? I'm going to check. Oh, no. What is happening? No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Welcome to an Anson Co. stream. It's always a cluster around here. I uh, hope you guys are doing well tonight. Let me know. I'm not monitoring, and somehow I just became hoarse at the same time of me going live. Um, I am. Yeah, I'm not monitoring, so let me know if you guys can hear me or not hear me. Um. Tonight, we're talking about the GH6. We're going to do a little bit of a watch along. Um, so I've got it, the feed pulled up from Lumix. Also, sorry, I'm a little bit late. <clears throat> Couldn't find my phone, and I'm trying to get people from Instagram over here. So um, I am currently live on YouTube. I'm also live on my Twitch channel, which if you are into gaming, I occasionally do gaming on my Twitch channel, but I more so do gaming on my kind of co-founded Twitch channel called Penny and Dime. Uh, every Tuesday night and sometime on the weekends, we do variety gaming. So um, let me real quick, we're going to get we're going to get some Instagram folks up here. We've got a couple of comments already. I had some of these up while the uh, intro was playing. Uh, Jordan says, yo, what's up, Jordan? How's it going? <clears throat> Good music and countdown. Thank you very much. Damien, what's up, man? How's it going? It's late for you. I know it's um, I have a buddy in the UK that was actually testing the GH6 and I'm like, are you going to be up for this? <laughs> so um, and can hear you well. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, I'm just getting my stuff in order for this event. I thought about popping some popcorn and sitting back and enjoying the event but uh i'm gonna play a little bit of host too uh but that being said i do have a glass here so cheers uh, we're gonna have a good time honestly this is going to be a very chill stream um yeah geez 1 a.m man i that sounds like me last night trying to get the uh sigma embargo video uh up uh, and ready to go if you guys don't know Sigma just, it's a day for camera news. Sigma just launched their first foyer into Fuji X mount lenses. Um, and I had the really cool honor to test out the uh, lenses for Fuji, for the Fuji X-T4. They loaned me a Fuji X-T4. I had an X-T3 for a while, um, but they loaned me an X-T4 to do this. Uh, and so that video is up, it's doing really well. So a lot of people are digging it, um, but go check it out after the stream, obviously. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to put out a finish video on my thoughts for this. Uh, so this may be really the only thing that we do to talk about the GH6. Um, so yeah, but we're going to, we're going to do it together. Uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to close out some windows here. Yeah, I'm going to leave site. Uh, we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the stream. That way we're not... I'll have to put my headphones in. Uh, that way we're not down to the wire. Share screen. We're going to, yes, Chrome tab. That's what we want. So let me pull that up. Uh, if you guys are just now joining the stream, like I said, we're talking about the GH6. Come chat. What I was saying earlier, this is going to be a chill, chill stream simply because like we're just here to talk about the GH6. It's an important day in the world of cameras and, uh, you know, 
if you're a videographer, filmmaker, like the GH6 is a great camera. The GH, sorry, the GH5 is a great camera. GH5 Mark II, hell, even the GH4. So seeing the GH6 come to play is nice. And with me being a recent Lumix, uh, uh, converted Lumix uh, individual with um, the S1H, I figured I had some sort of skin in the game. So why not? Uh, so yeah, drop a comment, um, drop a chat, what you guys think are thinking about the camera as things are getting announced, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it up as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the feed. Oh, it might help if I add it to the stream. Let me see if I can actually full screen this. There we go. So while we wait, I'm going to get my headphones in. <clears throat> Oh man. Uh Pajol Pajoltral? I am very sorry if I mispronounce that. Uh 3 a.m. Jeez. Jeez. Damien, what's up, man? Uh I'm glad you're able to watch it live as well. Us FP owners are uh reacting to, to some GH5. I'm sorry if you're hearing a whole bunch of knocking around. My earbuds don't want to cooperate. Uh yes, I am rocking the earbuds my airpods are dead so i'm going all 2008 9 10 somewhere on there uh all right so let me all right wonder if there'll be a g9 replacement along with the gh6 Possible. I, I don't know. I feel like this is going to be a pretty much a GH6 conversation. Um, also, might want to just because I can't mod it. Let me. Well, let me see. Let me go over to. Let me go over to YouTube. Let me see what the mixing for this sounds like. I think it's. All right. All right. Now, that being said, um, I'm not going to talk the entire time. I'm going to consume just like you guys. Uh, we're all here to kind of watch along. I'm going to take some notes and then we're going to talk about it. Um, so, yeah, we're here. We're camera nerds. We like cameras. That's why you guys subscribe to my channel. That and lenses. I just only talk about lenses. I actually have some cool stuff coming up. It's uh, I've got a very budget friendly v mount battery that i'm actually using right now on the s1h um and uh, a light that i'm going to be reviewing so i know i've been doing a lot of lenses lately we're going to give some love to some other gear damien says has a gh6 price been announced uh not officially i heard i saw some rumors today that was like 1800 euros and i tried to do the conversion on that and it didn't sound right um so I asked my friend that was testing it and he was like, that's not right. So I don't think it's been officially announced. All right. So I'm pulling up my notes here. And again, you guys, if you just joined the stream, drop a comment, drop a chat. Um, I've been doing a lot of Twitch lately. And so I feel like I'm talking like a Twitch streamer, but no, it's legit. Like let's, let's chat about, it. let's talk about it. Damien says, don't keep, I don't keep up with Panasonic. They're going Micro Four Thirds with this one still. Yeah, I mean, I think they're pretty invested in Micro Four Thirds still. So, um, which is good. I think it's good. Um, I'm personally not a Micro Four Thirds fan anymore. Uh, I've, you know, with going to the Pocket 6K Pro, I was, you know, okay, like Super 35. And then with the FP and S1H, I'm just like, I, I love that full frame magic. Um, but I, th I think for, I, I saw somebody today, a cinematographer, um, uh, pull off some shots with a GH5 Mark II. And I was like, damn, this is better than anything I can do on a, even a black magic camera. Like it looked real good. So it, yes, I think they're still going, um, micro four thirds and that for better force. Here we go. I like when people watch my films, they come back with their own 
visions of what I wanted to say. Filmmaking um, for me is a way of connecting to others. My hope for the GH6 is that it's a camera I can just like have with me in every moment and just capture it in a way that I feel free. <laughs> 創造 has a great reputation of always making leaps and bounds improvements that are appropriate for the time and the situations and so we're really excited to see how Panasonic is going to um, pivot with this new camera. I'm happy with the GH5. I use them all the time. And I'm hoping the G86 goes to the next level. Hi, I'm Frederick Van Johnson, photographer and podcaster, and the guy behind the This Week in Photo podcast. I'd like to thank you for joining this live stream. As you might imagine, today is an exciting day for the Lumix team and for creators everywhere. Since the beginning, Lumix has been a world leader in digital imaging innovation, from the introduction of the world's first digital single lens mirrorless camera to the addition of a host of innovations and video firsts in the celebrated GH series of cameras. Today is the introduction of the brand new flagship camera in our Lumix GH line, the GH6. We've always valued the vision of filmmakers and cinematographers, just like what you watched in that introduction video. Listening to creators about their creative self-expression requirements has always been the top priority when developing Lumix cameras. And now the Lumix team is proud to unveil the next stage in the evolution of the GH series, the GH6. The Micro Four Thirds system is already extremely well suited for video production and GH6 will create even more creative possibilities. In short, the GH6 introduces an exciting new creative dimension featuring a broader range of creative features and mobile capabilities. Here are some of the exciting new features and capabilities of the GH6. The GH6 has adopted a new live MOS sensor and a new Venus engine. The sensor resolution has been increased by more than 20% compared to GH5 to 25.2 megapixels with higher resolution, higher speed signal readout and wider dynamic range. Dual IS2 capabilities have increased to 7.5 stops. New advanced image processing technology provides high resolution and natural noise reproduction, as well as the rich expressive color reproduction that Lumix is known for. The Lumix GH6 contains built-in V-Log V-Gamut LUTs for the first time in Lumix G Micro Four Thirds cameras and provides a stunning 12 plus stops of dynamic range and up to 13 plus stops of wide dynamic range using dynamic range boost mode. The new Lumix GH6 changes the game again with 422 10-bit C4K 60p and unlimited recording time. 420 10-bit 4K 120p and 422 10-bit FHD 240p HFR or high frame rate. GH6 can record FHD at a maximum of 300 frames per second VFR or variable frame rate. In addition to 420 10-bit 5.7K 60p, 420 10-bit 5.8K 30p or 4.4K 60p, anamorphic 4.3 video can be recorded utilizing the full area of the sensor and the GH6 can display de-squeezed anamorphic footage on the monitor in real time. 5.7K 30P video recording is available in ProRes 422HQ. This is a first for Lumix. The highly mobile body is equipped with a variety of video recording formats covering everything from filming to post-production workflow. The GH6 features the high mobility, power and rich functionality required in today's video industry. The Lumix team's goal is to enable new paths of creativity in video production while creating a new market for the industry. We'll do this together with all creators seeking new power and video expression. Panasonic is proud to offer cameras with such high reliability that can be trusted by professional creatives everywhere. During the development of GH6, we've worked closely with director and cinematographer Jacob Schwartz from Mystery Box. Let's hear his first impressions of this new camera. So my name is Jacob Schwartz. I'm a filmmaker that's based here in Salt Lake City, Utah. 
I think the GH6 was super essential to this project and this it worked really well for this project because what we needed was a small camera that, that was very versatile and could work quickly. Especially when we're dealing with COVID where we're always still trying to battle a lot of different variables and trying to battle a lot of different unforeseen circumstances. It was a quick and fast tool that allowed us to shoot quickly and efficiently and tell our story without having to have all of the overhead that we usually have with typical film productions. For the most part, we shot everything, actually for everything we shot at the new 5.7 ProRes HQ format at 2398. Um, we felt that was the best format that we could do. Again, um, we are huge fans of having our content future-proofed as well as having the flexibility of changing stuff in post. I know that there's a lot of cinematographers out there that's like frame it for what it needs and it is what it is, but we are huge advocates of windowing our frame. And so having the 5.7 resolution allows us to just have that flexibility of saying, you know what, if we have to reframe or adjust that pan or push in or stabilize that image for any reason at all, we have that extra re resolution to do that with. That was such a great, you know, feature of the camera that we really appreciated. The great thing that we loved the most about how the Lumex GH6 camera introduced ProRes into its new camera was ProRes is like the universal standard codec for most all post houses. Not having to deal with converting and cross converting from different codecs that are more efficient on DIA cameras, um, having ProRes built in has just been invaluable, especially as it comes to post. We have a few scenes that are green screen, and we also have a few scenes that are just going to need that extra bit of bit depth that we've grown accustomed to with ProRes. We definitely use the dynamic range boost on the new GH6. And especially with, with us shooting out in nature where we don't have as much control of the light and where we're trying to do a lot of different balancing between our shadows and highlights, having that extra dynamic range was super invaluable, especially out in the desert. We were super impressed with the IBIS. I'm excited that as we got back into the post room, how stable the images were when we were shooting in handheld with IBIS. The GH6 was invaluable because it allowed us to take a story that could have been really complex and overbearing and now allow us to shoot it in a very short time frame, but also retain the image quality that we, we are used to with some of the bigger camera systems. Um, and so especially now with the ProRes and especially now with the new Wood. CF Express card format, it all kind of worked beautifully into our ecosystem here at Mystery Box and Paradox Post of taking the project from conception all the way through delivery. All right, thank you, Jacob. It's great to hear some of the new features are being appreciated on the new GH6. The recommended retail price for GH6 will be $21.99 USD and $21.99 Euro. And future GH6 performance enhancements will be delivered via firmware updates Ooh. and we'll continue to update the camera features based on the needs of our customers. Lumix has always placed importance on creating cameras that enable new video expression we know creators will love the new GH6 and the new creative possibilities this amazing new camera brings. Stand by for a live Q&A session with Matt Frazier and Sean Robinson from the Lumix team. All right, everybody. This is this is such an exciting announcement from Panasonic Lumix. As you all know, the it. GH6 is finally here, and we are now I being mean, joined by Matt Fraser to shit. actually talk about it and address the, the questions the that all of live you may have in the chat. What's up, Matt? I'd head over there. Hey, Fuck Sean. This <laughs> I'm sure you haven't been very busy today. I'm actually going to stop um, it so we can chat about it. And then if you guys want to go talk to them. <clears throat> all right. All right. All right, GH6, it's freaking here. Did we get an announcement date or a go live date? I don't think we did. I don't think we did. I might have to. I might have to ask a friend for that one. Um, there are plenty of embargo videos that are going up right now, so completely understand that people drop off and what have you. We're, I'm really only going to probably be streaming until like eight thirty or so because I know you guys are going to probably going to go watch the actual like reviews and overviews. But I want to talk about a couple of things because I, these are there are a couple of very exciting things about the GH6. And honestly, even me as someone that has said I'm kind of like over, I don't really want to use micro four thirds, but this these things would make me consider using micro four thirds again. Um, freaking ProRes, ProRes internal. So I actually found out about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I was just like, that's 
black magic level of offering internal ProRes or like cinema, uh, cinema camera level. Uh, and so that was just a nice added bonus to have ProRes internal. I was shooting with the X-T4 this past weekend and having ProRes was nice, but that was again, external and I can record external to the, you know, uh, video assist or even, um, the, uh, Atomos Ninja five and do pro res. And so having it internally is nice. So it did say the 5.7 K was going to be pro res HQ or available pro as HQ up to 30 frames per second. But if you saw the firmware update, they're also going to be offering cinema 4k and pro res, which is nice. So if you're not like a, a resolution person, you can benefit from ProRes as well. Um, so we had a couple chats while we were uh, kind of doing our thing. Um, let me get to some of these. I have to say Panasonic has got a decent range uh, for Cine guys, micro four thirds to full frame. For sure. For sure. I don't, do they cover? I mean, I guess you can do super 35 on some of the full frame options, but yeah, I mean, this is one reason why I chose Panasonic over Sony and I give me all the hate, you know, in the comments, whatever. There is reason for me to say that Panasonic and the cameras that Panasonic puts together is way more geared, way more geared to filmmakers. Um, yes, you have cameras like the a seven S three and the FX three. And, you know, those are mirrorless cameras that can do impressive things, but like Panasonic is putting out camera features that like filmmakers, like, like not, I don't want to make this sound bad, but like filmmakers, not necessarily YouTubers or content creators will benefit from you know, anamorphic features, um, you know, with the S1H and, and I, I, I don't know if they said it, but I'm pretty sure the GH6 has uh, time code sync. Um, and so like, I, I think I saw that in the rumors. Um, but if that's the case, then those are features that bigger filmmakers and bigger cinematographers care about more than 4K 120 necessarily. That's just, you know, kind of where I see the line drawn uh, with between Sony and somebody like Panasonic. Um, it really they really do offer something to filmmakers, especially filmmakers that are on a budget, because I mean, honestly, you could buy a GH5 for dirt cheap probably right now. And that's a very capable camera for a new filmmaker. It's crazy. Uh, Philip said, Gerald and Dunn crashes the party by dropping full review during uh, live unveil. Yeah, but there won't be any B-roll or live footage shots taken. Um, and not that I'm going to have it. Not that I mean, they're going to have some. Um, that's just my honestly, if you're going to go watch a review, go see Pav SZ. Um, his review is up, uh, I believe, in the next little bit. Go watch his video. I probably got a bring this down because <laughs> I'm probably not supposed to tell you that he's having one drop. Um, Mark says, especially I love it. Uh, why not get a 6k pro over this or Z cam? It's a hard sell IMO. Um, 6k, honestly, 6k pro Z cam, in my opinion, do not have the backing that Panasonic as far as like tried and true brand, in my opinion. And, and I may be wrong in that opinion, but one thing I like about Panasonic is this is a brand that has a decent quality control, uh, you know, protocol. They are one of the bigger name brands. Um, yes, they're not maybe like in some realms, like as big as like Canny, Can Canny, Canon or Sony, uh, but they're in the conversation of Canon, Sony. Fujifilm, uh, you know, Nikon, they're in that conversation. Whereas I feel like Blackmagic and Zcam are still in that. It's, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. It's like a, I don't know. It, it's just, it's a different level of quality in my opinion. Um, so that's, that's, that's me being burned by 6K Pro. So probably talking out of pain. 
Uh, fill me in. I missed all of it. Uh, all right. So let's run down a couple of my notes. And you guys, I, I, he was, that was one thing that I noticed. I was like, you guys are going hella fast. Like I can barely keep up. Uh, 25 megapixels, um, new sensor, 7.5 stops of IBIS, which is dope. Full vlog. Uh, so no vlog L that you have to buy. I think it's actually pre installed. Um, 12 stops of dynamic range. I think they said 13 with the dynamic range boost, which is dope. Um, a couple of different resolution options. Uh, I think you can get somewhere close to 6K. Um, and then anamorphic de squeezing uh, as per usual. Um, the ProRes internal, which right now is in the 5.7K up to, I, I, I get, I don't know if it's, I, I would imagine it's going to be up to 30 frames, not just 30 frames per second seeing that Panasonic does cater a lot to filmmakers that are filming at 24 frames per second. Um, so you have four, uh, ProRes 422HQ. Um, and then there is a, apparently going to be a firmware update where that will be available in the DCI 4K flavor. All that for $21.99. For, uh, micro Four Thirds sensor. So um, Damien says, as an S1H owner, would you pick up the GH6? I consider as a B cam. Sure. Absolutely. I think it's a great B cam, especially with the time code sync. If that is a real thing, um, not that I'm like on a studio, but like as a cinematographer that may be in a studio, I would absolutely consider the GH six as a B cam. Um, you know, uh, and for that matter, even an A cam in some scenarios, maybe I don't know the exact dimensions, but if it's smaller, maybe you can get into, you know, tighter places. And then for that matter, like micro four thirds lenses are going to be, a you know, reasonably smaller than full frame lenses. And so even just factoring in the lenses, you might be able to get into tighter spaces, more versatile places with the GH6. So I, I mean, I, I'd consider it. I, me personally, I just, it's not in my budget. Um, and so if it were maybe, um, I think I would probably have to own the S1H and be in the Panasonic ecosystem more to say that I would buy this over other offerings. But uh, I, I think it makes sense to absolutely own this as a as a, a partner cam to the S1H or any of the Lumix full frame cameras. Yes, Damien says reliability, and ease of use. That, I mean, not Damien. Philip says Damien, reliability, ease of use. And we uh, we agreed there. Mark says, no, you're right. Uh, my problem with micro four thirds at this point is simple. You can buy an S five. So why wouldn't you? I think the, uh, that's a good, good call out. Um, the S five is cheaper at this point. It, it all depends on if you want full frame, like some people just don't want full frame, you know, um, I'm being a little bit weird about my composure. There we go. Um, some people just don't want to go full frame because, I mean, you got to think about like, OK, so we have the two cost. You have the GH6, you have you have the S5. Yes, the S5 is going to be a couple hundred dollars cheaper. But you also think about on the flip side, micro four thirds lenses are much cheaper in general than full frame lenses. And so like that's the, where like you have to factor in like in the long run is one cheaper is, you know, especially if you have glass already like if you own uh you know how many gh5 owners owns you know a lumix 12 to 35 a sigma 18 to 35 um or um you know any other kind of you know those staple micro four thirds lenses and 1835 doesn't necessarily work with the s5 because it's uh crop sensor it's a crop sensor lens now i've used it on the fp i haven't used it on the s1h but uh, so you can put it in super 35 mode and that's fine. Uh, but like, you know, the, uh, the 18, the 12 to 35 is a micro four thirds mount lens. You're not going to use that on the S five. So if you already have the lenses and that's the case with any new camera that comes out, like, do I really want to jump ship and have to deal with all my lenses? Uh, so I think that would be the case for improving on the GH, uh, you know, improving on what you did with the GH five and GH five Mark two with the GH6. Honestly, I think that the next discussion is like how pissed are the GH5 Mark II people? Are there even any GH5 Mark II people? Like, I don't even know if people bought that camera. So, uh, any mention about AF? 
not that I use AF. Um, they, I didn't see anything on AF. Uh, I can maybe tell you that the, uh, what time is it? I can't tell you yet. I don't think, but there is a video coming out that I'm pretty sure this individual does do an autofocus test. And I may leave it in the description once this video wraps up. Got to keep those secrets. All right. Um, Mark says ideal run and gun uh, supplement to the S1H for sure. 1000%. Uh, Damien says, I feel like once you jump to full frame and buy full frame lenses, it's hard to justify moving back down to a smaller sensor. And that's where the conversation again goes back like to the S5 versus GH6. I feel like if people were like, you know, S1H or S1 owners and they're looking for another camera to supplement what they have. And they were waiting for the GH6 to come out. And if it's between the GH6 and what it offers versus the S5, I, I, I mean, honestly, I, I might actually choose the GH6 over the S5. Just because here's why. I, I don't know why I said it like that. But the GH6 offers way more than the S5. I am really curious if there are things like a full HDMI, which the GH5 does not, or the S5 does not have. Um, if, you know, if obviously if there's more dynamic range, um, you know, more stops of IBIS, because I feel like the S5 is a stripped down S1H. And I, I feel like the GH6 is just a, a smaller S1H, maybe with even some improvements over the S1H. And those are two different things because a stripped down S1H strips down features, strips down things that you may want, whereas a smaller S1H may have all the things that the S1H has that you would want just in a smaller package or smaller sensor. And so that's where I feel like the difference would be. In that sense, I, I if I was looking for a B cam for the S1H, and I had the budget, uh, that would be where I would find the hard part is, do I go S S5 or do I go GH6? And I really do think that there is a um, a, a debate or a, a, you know, you can go either way there. Uh, Damien says, uh, a set of Micro Four Thirds cinema lenses costs about the same price of one. <laughs> I don't know why I have a cough this week. Uh, one full frame lens uh, from budget brands, a lack of better term. Yes, yes. Uh, sorry, I butchered the way to read that too. Um, yes, Micro Four Thirds cinema lenses. I literally just bought one uh, for the OG pocket camera. Um, I'll be right back. So this is, and I, I still have the one that I reviewed. Uh, I Zongyi Optics has tried to get me to, or has told me I need to send back the 25 millimeter, but every time I talk to them about it, they're like, yeah, I'll get you a shipping label. And I haven't gotten one yet. So this is a 17 millimeter. Um, I just got this. I haven't shot much with it. When I got it, I was doing some different lens reviews. And so I just haven't had time to shoot with it. This is 450, 450, and that's on the pricey side, but this is also a 17 millimeter T1. And so on micro four thirds, you're looking at close to like a, I think I did the math. It was like 45 millimeters and the aperture is around a, well, I mean T1. So it'd be like an F2, like if we're doing the equivalent. Um, and so that's impressive for $450. Now to get a T1, uh, Actually, to get a T1 for full frame, this company's putting out actually it has one out. They just started launching it. Um, it's a thousand dollars. So I could buy two of these for the price of the one that they have for the EF mount. So by the way, I, I my new sleeper set is Zongyi Optics. Like I kind of wish that uh I didn't have the Leicas because I'd probably buy them more. Or I'd probably use them more if I didn't have the Leicas. Yeah, so IBIS stabilization on Micro Four. That's a good point. Like, was it 7.5 stops of IBIS? Like, holy geez. I'm pretty sure that's more than the S1H. And and you got to think about, like, the with the fact of, like, if it's a similar size body, just by default, like, you have a smaller sensor, so you have more room 
for the system to uh, counteract that sensor as far as movement. And so like, yeah, like absolutely. Ibis would definitely be a winner there. Jordan says true. Um, I think any hardcore camera people would have known. Oh my God, I have to sneeze. Mm, I'm going to try to read this without sneezing. I think any hardcore camera uh, people would have known the GH6 was coming and the GH5 Mark II was a, a, a stopgap. Yeah, I don't, I genuinely don't know anybody that bought that camera. I, I know ambassadors for Lumix that have that camera. Like one of my favorite cinematographers, um, I can't think of her name right now. I was literally just chatting with her earlier on her Instagram because I like the way that she graded her GH5 footage, but I can't freaking think of her name. Emily Sky. Um, she has a GH5 Mark II, but I'm pretty sure she's an ambassador, so they probably sent her one. Uh, so honestly, I'd much rather see her thoughts on the GH6 than anyone else because I love her cinematography. Uh, probably one of my favorite like GH5 uh, filmmakers out there. Uh, I think you're fully invested in... I think if you're fully invested in full frame system, you wouldn't need want a GH6. I think it's for people who already own Micro Four Thirds Universe. Maybe. I mean, like I said, if I were between buying an S5 and the GH6 for a, a second camera for the S1H, I'd probably go GH6 because I, had to, I mean, maybe, maybe. Because I mean, if I slap on a 24 to 70, I already have that for the S5. Um, but if I needed to buy a second lens with the body, like, that's where I would look at maybe GH6. I think it, I think it's a better B cam. I don't know. I haven't used the S5, so I'm not going to say this, but just from what I've seen and what I've heard about, I feel like it may be a better B cam for the S1H than even the S5 is. The S5 honestly could be a camera just without being a B. It could be an A cam from a lot of people. Both cameras can be, um, but yeah. Oh, you got the run. I don't say that. I literally was joking with somebody today. I was like, do I just like, am I like one of those people in a zombie outbreak that you find out at the end of the movie that was never susceptible to the virus? Cause like we haven't gotten it yet. And so like, and we've been around it. Like our daycare shut down because there were cases with it. I swear to God, if I run out, I'm pissed. I might have to take an at home test after this. Watch you stress me out on my stream, Mark. Jeez. Also depends on what type of lenses you use. If you use L mount lenses, you can adapt them to the G. Yo, you can't adapt them. I was about to be like, bro, you can do that. What? About to use some full frame lenses on other micro four thirds cameras. But if you use older DSLR or manual lenses, you can use them on uh, any camera you own for sure. I mean, I could use a Leica's on S1H, GH6, uh, you know, so. It really, yeah, it really depends on lens selection. So like I said before, like if you're already in micro four thirds lenses, like there's no, there's really not a need to upgrade at, at this point because the GH6 is, uh, is crazy. He said, Damien says that Speedmaster. Hell yeah. That's Speedmaster. Dude, this thing is sick. I've gotten like exactly two shots with this so far but you i don't know if you guys saw my my 25 millimeter review and that's what made me buy the 17 uh because the 25 this is exclusively for the og pocket camera so i will be making more og pocket camera here soon og pocket camera videos here soon uh and so i will be using this uh i almost thought about shooting some like uh un known projects on this uh with the pocket but i think i'm still gonna go like uh with the sigma fp dude i'm telling you i'm a sucker for that for the black and yellow text absolutely it looks very cook like that's that's what it reminds me of i'm very much into it i'm not a fan of this lens cap like it's like everything was great until we got to the lens cap and it's just like the cheapest lens cap you can have with like you couldn't put yellow on the like for your logo and stuff like meh all right so i'm into it cries and we'll never have enough money to rent or buy cook same same let's go fp dude okay you guys all right i watched a live stream last night uh where there was a a, a youtube channel that interviewed one of the cinematographers of the avatar 2 i think it was the guy that was doing a lot of their underwater filming um he was doing uh he's working on avatar 2 um in some obviously some other big projects 
uh, he was talking about how he chose the FP over a lot of like different cameras. One of them being the Sony Venice, um, not on Avatar because av usually you don't buy like prosumer cameras for big projects. So there are times where you do, but probably something not like Avatar. Um, but he was talking about how he prefers the colors that come from something like the FP versus something like a Sony Venice. Like it has truer colors. He was talking about cinema D and G and how like it just it made me fall in love with the camera even more. I'll have to link that somewhere at some point. I might even just put it on the community because uh, it was it was it's about an hour listen. Um, and I listened to the whole thing. and I was like, man, this camera like I've had it for two years and more and more. I'm like, God, I love this camera. Um, if it wasn't for the fact of like the S1H has IBIS. I would be taking the FP to a, a shoot this weekend, but I kind of want to do slow motion, but I, and I need to film in 4K. So. Um, cool. All right. So I think I might sell my video assist. I love DNG so much. Uh, I go back and forth on the video assist. Something that has has come up that's really cool about the video assist. And I don't know if you know this. And if you do. I don't know how I didn't know this because we talk about the video assist all the time. But the video assist can actually be used as a capture card for your camera, which this the FP you can actually use as a webcam, just straight USB. I didn't know that. I didn't know that you could use a video assist as a capture card or like a capture card type device, which is dope. Um, and I do like I do like DCI 4K with a video assist on the FP. And that's like uh, that's probably the reason I'll keep it. Uh, and then I did do the like little short that I put out last week with the 24 to 70 Sigma. And I, I got to where I was like, I really like the colors from the video assist and the FP for this project. I'm going to give the video assist a chance, but I, I do a lot of time prefer the cinema DNG footage over, uh, over video assist footage. Uh, I'm waiting to update the FP. Uh, I'm waiting for the update for the FP in April. Yep. I uh, need to play with B-roll update that just dropped. Okay, I need to go watch this B-roll update. I have been like, I, my brain has been immersed in we're selling our house this week, um, our old house. Um, I've been in embargo. I've had two embargo reviews this, like, uh, you know, the past couple weeks. I am drowning in information. I have not had time to go look at this, this B-roll update or this video assist update. I need to go look into this, but if you want to give me a TLDR, like in the chat, what the hell has actually been updated with it? I feel like it's some good news as far as like, I think there's some exposure override, which has been a huge issue with the FP as far as reading, falsely reading exposure. If you're not in the native 100 uh, ISO or any of the native ISOs. Um, so yeah, you have to, you have to let me know. Uh, bup, bup, bup. Remember when I was like, like fiending for, huh? Remember when I was like fiending for ISO change? That's basically, oh, oh, got it, got it. That's all I read and I care about LMO. You can do, oh, you can do ISO change in post. That's dope because often I need that and I hate that it's grayed out. Okay, I'm updating, I'm updating. Um, I'm here for it. This has just turned into an FP conversation because we love the FP and that's great. Um, that being said, all right. I said 8.30. It's 8.34. Y'all, GH6 is out. I think it's I think it's dope. Honestly, I really do think that if you're an S1H owner, it might be a more viable option than the S5. If you're on production, especially if it's true that it does do time code sync and you're on a, a larger shoot and larger production, it can definitely serve as a secondary uh, camera to the S1H and even probably even um, a primary camera and a camera and for a lot of uh, projects. And for that matter, like the S1H is, um, you know, a, a great B cam for some of the cine, uh, cine cams from Panasonic. Uh, so it could be a third cam. It, it really just has more potential, I think, I think than the S5. That's my opinion. Um, all right. So that being said, GH6 is out. Twenty one ninety nine. Uh, I don't know when the launch date is. Hopefully, we'll get that soon. Maybe it's like twenty twenty three. We'll get a launch date. Um, and uh, I'm gonna actually hop over to Caleb Hoover's 
live stream. I'm going to, there's a couple of things we're going to do. Let me double check actually before we leave because he's my buddy and we're going to make this happen. We're going to do this. I encourage you guys to go watch on your own accord just to give the view. But see if it's dropped. Yes, it has. Oh, yeah. All right. We're going to watch one thing, then we're going to GTFO. I'm going to give good old Pav a watch. Watch the ad first. <laughs> Get the Rona. Oh, Pav, what's going on with those lights? He may have told me today that he, he did test the autofocus. Oh, wow. I'm not even showing this. Oh Nobody my has God. asked me or paid me to say anything specific about it. So this is my honest and unbiased opinion about this camera. I don't really want to bore you with all the technical data about this camera, but I'm going to go through builds and the main external features first and then go through all the major specs those most important ones anyway the price this will retail for 1999 pounds here in uk or 2199 dollars it might be pounds is it a good price for a macro four thirds camera that depends on what you're going to be using it for if you are a filmmaker this has literally got everything you might ever uh, over on his channel want. Uh, check out Caleb Hoover. Uh, also and he's streaming in like with eight minutes, 12 to which I'm probably going to head out to go watch his stream. Lens. First impression when We're I got watching out of the Pop box first impressions wow. now. This camera looks very cool. There are a few significant changes and improvements to the body since GH5 to make me feel different about this camera. It is chunkier and that makes it feel to me more pro. This big hand grip. The biggest I have seen on any mirrorless camera, very comfortable to hold, really nice. Instantly noticeable vents for cooling underneath the LCD screen on the side and underneath. There's now rec button at the top as usual, but also at the front. And the, the biggest change from GH5 is the, the tilt screen. It is the same as the one on S1H. When the tilts uh, and flips at the same time. So fully articulated like that. this way and it also flips this way as well. Double card slots, CF Express and SD, full size HDMI socket, USB-C, uh, yes. separately covered phones yes. and mic sockets, and the whole camera feels different than GH5, more substantial. It uses the same button. Okay, I'm gonna say this real quick. I have already found out more information about the GH6 watching this video than I did the announcement. I'm, I'm just putting that out there. Tris as S5, these uh, DMW BLK 22s, but in the short time I have been using it, the camera seems to use more power than my S5. The batteries don't seem to last as long. There's also included time code in and out adapter cable that connects to the flash socket at the front. This possibly will help to get this camera Netflix certified when it is out, out. So what do we have inside? New 25 megapixel sensor with a new Venus engine. Okay. So he made a good point, or a very subtle point. When it's out, out. I need to, I need to ask to clarify. I don't think he has a release date, um, which makes me concerned that this is just another like, it's coming. Which is kind of BS in my opinion, but whatever. And even though it is a hybrid camera, perfectly capable of taking photos, it is a video monster with specs that should please even TV production companies. This camera can now record 5.7K up to 30 frames per second Apple ProRes 422 HQ that's internally. Insane. And that's not all. 
In dot mob settings, it does do 24 do if you saw that. 60p, 4 to 0, and then it does all other formats. Everything from C4K, 120p, to 4K, 120p, and full HD in 240 frames per second, 4 to 2, 10 bit internally. There's a lot of formats and frames to choose from. It also features full VLOG built in, 13 uh, stops of dynamic range, and no need to purchase it anymore. It's pre installed. The VLOG flat profile is pre installed now. <laughs> It also supports 5.8K 30p anamorphic and 60p in 4.4K in all standard anamorphic formats 1.3, 1.5, 1.8, and 2 times squeeze. There's obviously no recording limits. The active heat management is going to make sure that the camera does not overheat. I'll do some tests on that when I'm doing the full review of this camera in a few weeks' time. Now, that's all they're telling me, and I presume it's right. Few other nice features are the best IBIS gyro sensor stabilization, giving you 7.5 stops of stabilization. This Lumix is what IBIS we're talking has about. Always been superb, and this new improved system can only be better. It is better. And one thing that a lot of people want to know is what's new with the auto focusing system. The answer is nothing. This is Lumix standard contrast detect AF, but with new Venus processor. So it should be generally a little bit better, but in reality, it is what it is. The autofocus works okay. Maybe not as good as Sony or any other brand, but it works. There's autofocus on this camera. Anyone buying into Lumix ecosystem should know what they are getting into. Incredibly specced camera, especially when it comes to video, that most people will manually focus with anyway. The thing is though, professional video cameras are only manual focus. This can be used manual focus, just like a pro video camera, but with the additional of okay autofocus. There's no point complaining about it. It won't change anything. It won't change the fact that this will be the best Micro Four Thirds camera on the market. The best Micro Four Thirds. I want to say something really quick. There was a, a discussion a while ago about like the GH6 has to have autofocus. And I was like, I, I don't think it's going to. Like Panasonic, they've that's never been a priority. It's always been features that cinematographers care about and filmmakers care about not just like autofocus so sorry so it's hybrid camera with amazing video specs on the market and also it is worth mentioning that there will be future firmware update that will bring usb a solid state drive direct recording and up to 120 frames per second raw video output over hdmi to ninja 5 plus wow. overall thoughts it is pretty much S1H with a micro four third sensor in it. A camera built and designed for a serious filmmaker in mind. Maybe not as groundbreaking as GH4 and GH5 were, but this little body really packs a punch. It is also a very decent photo camera. A lot of people forget that. But when it comes to video, this camera has it all. All the formats, all the frame rates that you could shake, stick at, and more. I think this will appeal more to people already invested in Micro Four Thirds system. All those GH5 users ready to upgrade, but also for those people who don't have a budget to spend on cinema cameras or cinema lenses, or even S1H and full frame lenses, this is a great stepping stone to the world of high-end video quality without spending a fortune on it. And it does photos as well. This is it from, from me this time. I can literally feel Lumix waiting for me to give this back to them. But I will have <laughs> it again very soon for the proper hands-on review. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Instagram for more photos and videos. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. We got to stay for his, so, his bloopers. What do we have? His bloopers are always... Uh, 4 to 0, and then it does all other formats. Everything from C4K, 120 frames per second, to 4K, 120 frames per second. And I run out of script because I missed too many numbers. <laughs> overall, overall, overall thoughts, by the way, it comes to... By the way, it comes to... Love it. I'm going to leave a comment here in just a minute. Gotta gotta give a shout out to the the smaller tubers. Uh, no Gerald up in here. We're watching straight Pav S Z. Yeah, I found out more in his video than I did in the entire launch video. So uh, autofocus not great, like we said. Uh, and honestly, I feel like I feel like the S one H has 
okay autofocus. And I'm curious if the GH6 is on par with that or if it's like other micro four, micro four thirds cameras they put out where it's just not good. So uh, there's that. Um, yeah, this is a spec'd out camera. It's not an autofocus camera. It gives you pretty much everything else you would need for filmmaking. So, I mean, like to his point, like this camera is going to be great for people that are wanting to up their game in, in filmmaking, um, and, uh, want to, you know, up their production. Sure. There's the option of going like the pocket 4k, uh, but I, uh, this is, this is my being an advocate for Lumix and Panasonic, whatever. Um, is I do think that Panasonic is a more tried and true company than Black Magic when it comes to build and quality. I said it today. I feel like Black, you know, at its core, Black Magic is an image, and sometimes that's it. It does do high frame rates and and things like that, but people buy Black Magic for the image, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I, 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 I. Yeah, and just I'm I'm terribly angry about my pocket 6k pro so um yeah uh you know some information there I, I I don't think we have a launch date the fact that he didn't put it in there I don't think we have a launch date so um yeah you definitely go go check out Pav's channel he I honestly this is regular stuff for him like he's that detailed he's that a lot of times with my videos you get like as the information that you need for a quick period of time and go like here's the the things that i think matter let's give it to you in five to six minutes and go because that's how i create i'm very like i don't want to sit down and be talking for a long period of time. And so Pav is very, very informative. Like he takes that time to sit and tell you the details that you may not think about or, you know, may think about and maybe somebody doesn't have any answer. So um, I definitely check out Pav's channel. I think he is, he is, he's crushing it. So uh, Damien says, yeah, Panasonic should have just linked this. Exactly. I, I freaking found out more in, in that that video than I did the freaking launch. Uh, I'm hyped for it now. I have zero plans. <laughs> uh, I have zero plans to buying it. Sure. Uh, I get you. I was worried when I was using pocket 4k for a shoot. Yeah, it's just, it's a great camera. Don't get me wrong. I think for the price, you cannot beat that camera. I would still recommend the pocket 4k to a lot of people. It's just when you are on the receiving end of black magic's quality control, just it it just makes the experience and the whole brand just it sours your experience with them and it's just and it's not that it's like a one off like because every company has issues it's just when you're known for this thing and you find out that that thing is true like it just confirms it and just makes you want to run away so i don't know maybe that's just me i don't want to spend two thousand dollars on a camera that's going to crap out on me in the middle of the shoot which the pocket 6k pro did so yeah, anyways, um, all right, I'm going to go head over and uh, to Caleb's channel, do some chatting. You guys head over there as well. Caleb Hoover, um, he is the GH5 guy. I thought about doing a finished video for tomorrow, but nope, that's not happening. So let's go, let's go hang out over at Caleb's uh, stream. Uh, thank you guys all for, uh, all for joining, uh, chatting, hanging out, um, yeah, and we do this every once in a while. I do this for camera announcements, uh, but I've started to do streams more often on, I think we're doing like once a month, the first Wednesday of every month. So next Wednesday, we should be doing a stream. Um, also, there's a film challenge going on. Do the film challenge. This is technically the last week. We may end up extending it, but there is some information in the description for the film challenge. So check that out. Uh, potentially win $100 to Amazon. So, all right. You guys have a good night. Thank you guys. Peace.